yes people uh reality based diets um back again back again today i took a little a little time off yesterday uh because obviously the day before i did i dropped i double dropped I double dropped <laughs> yeah um was it two 20 minute episodes yeah so yeah i guess i've kind of set a little standard for myself now so i had to sort of recalibrate for a second and think about how i was going to do it um and the type of stuff that i was going to talk about so i had to reflect on the type of stuff that i've already spoken about um and yeah i come to the conclusion that i haven't spoken enough about my light um i've spoken plenty about my darkness um and like you know trying to overcome um about you know the things that's going on not not to say that you know that's over because it's not over yet so i'm gonna still be on their neck um but yeah man i want to talk about my light right and obviously certain parts of this story i'm gonna leave out because um yeah for now i want to leave them bits for another story because i don't think they're that relevant to my life right um yeah one of my you know one of my fondest memories and and people um and teachers and role models um in my life was it it became that because obviously um at one years old something happened with my parents and I had to go live with my grandparents. Um, I lived with my gran uh, and my granddad, yeah, my mum's parents. Um, and yeah, man, my granddad, like, just, like I'm saying to you, One of the greatest men that I ever knew. Um, let me try to wheel it in, because usually, right, say if I was trying to have this conversation a year ago, it wouldn't be getting to me like this. But obviously now that I know what I know, and I know even more of what I know, and <laughs> as all of this, shit becomes clear it's even more beautiful right um my son my son's name is dejon james green right he, i gave my my son the middle name james because that was my grandfather's name my grandfather that raised me and shaped me from early right um I used to I like from very young he was one of the first ones up come get me up like get me ready stick me in a buggy and we're going out we're going for walks yeah <laughs> like I might have to edit this video still. <laughs> yeah, let me compose myself. 
because I'm not sad. I'm happy. <laughs> but yeah. He was he was one of the first people not first people, first men. And not even first men, but like it was the first bit of consistency that I had from a male figure. There you go. Because of events that happened, you know, when I was one. Um, and the consistency was, you know, instilling of, of morals and all the rest of it, but it was also a consistency of pride. Like, he was proud of me, isn't it? He was happy to show me off. Um, and yeah, I learned I learned a lot from him. Um, from a young age, I was able to sit down, be still, and take in information because of this man and his presence in my life and his influence. Right, so from a young age, just put it this way, I was able to sit and watch that whole football matches and taking it in. And my granddad's commentary and talking on the game, because obviously he was, he'd catch jokes, and he, he would, you know, take the mick out of like certain players, etc. for what like, but he'd also have insight into the game, right? Um, my granddad uh, was um, a structural engineer. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's more to it than that. Like, he might have been an architect as well. I can't remember specifics, but I just remember that um, he, he moved from Scotland, like he used to work on the docks um, and he moved from Scotland to Wales um, as part of a, a building company, construction company that built some of the first power stations um, in, in the county, right? Um, So yeah, when I'm watching sports with him, like basically he taught me spatial awareness, right? And composition, I guess, whether I realized it or not, right? Um, Cause of his insight into, into football, um, Obviously, his mind was the mind of an engineer or well, I'm pretty sure structural engineer, which is architecture and obviously maths, um, especially for things like power stations and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. So like, like I'm saying, there was, there was aspects of my teachability that kind of lied within me having a, a visual representation in real time as is you know in order to learn properly um i'm i'm hands-on i'm a hands-on learner as well so like i don't know aspects of my 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 analytical and creative thought process I owe to my grand my grandfather as well. Um, obviously, the nurture and the you know the the moral set, the family 
orientated mindset. And and the love, yeah? Like that's within family that's that's supposed to be standard, right? <clears throat> so obviously that was something that, that truly shaped me in, in many ways. But the thing I want to talk about is the extra shit. Um, like I'm saying, I'd sit, I'd sit for hours. It didn't really matter what sport. Obviously, football was my favorite. Like, because I'm saying to you, I, I've been watching, <laughs> I've been watching football, like full games of football. Since I was, well, let me put it this way. Since Man United didn't have, had like maybe one foreign player, like Eric Cantona, or maybe even before his days, because I remember the days of like Mark Hughes and Brian Robson. Like, like I'm not a Man United fan, but I referenced that in that way because, um, you know, my granddad would watch FA Cup, FA Cup finals, this, that and the other, Champs League, all of it. Obviously, um, also on top of the football, like, you know, every other sport, you know, because obviously, as we know, when, when granddads are retired and that, they're chilling, yeah, so they're just watching stuff that they want to watch and if you're there and there's one tv that's what you're watching but i used to enjoy watching that you know obviously plenty of football i still love watching football i used to love playing football um but like i'm saying to you the the way that i was raised by him shaped a lot of the way that i looked at a lot of the stuff that I was good at and the stuff that I resonate at, I resonated with. Like, um, majority of school, I always kind of lent and had a flair for um, creative, the creative side of things, yeah? So art, not to say that I was ever, like, cause obviously you get certain people that are like naturally talented in terms of they pick up a pencil and they can draw something and it's do you know what i mean it's you're looking at the thing yeah that was never me and my skill set um you and, and you get people that you know can pick up some clay and create another masterpiece that wasn't me either right but what i always kind of had was um a flair for composition, like what gets put on a page and where and why is where, like. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but like back then, I don't really equate it to my grandfather, but now I 100% do, right? Um, because, yeah, even the way that I used to play football, um, I, I was much more interested in creating the goal, like creating the opportunity, creating the opening than I was in scoring. Like, like my, some of my favorites, uh, favorite footballers, like my, like true heroes like in the game is the creators I can don't get me wrong yeah like because I'm an Arsenal fan Thierry Henry is still you know what I mean he's the goat of goats because he could do both right but even leading into that and since that my favorite players are either you know eights or tens that like midfielders, saucy, balanced, read the game, can see the whole pitch, know who's who and what's what and what pass to play when. Like, 
that's my shit, man. Like, I guess in America, you might call that type of player in, in your type of football, hand hand throw football, yeah. You might call that person the, the quarterback, yeah. Um, in basketball, point guard, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Listen, I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, yeah, <clears throat> I had to, I, I need to vocally attribute, well, I need to vocally talk about my light and vocally attribute the places where it come from, right? <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think I think I've spoken enough about about that situation because <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You had like fucking three minutes of tears and madness at the beginning, right? So maybe I needed to get that out of the way. Um, so yeah, man, like with the with my childhood, especially right. Um, the icebreaker, the because because I because I moved around a lot growing up. I went to a lot of different schools, right? Well, I say a lot. I said I went to a few different schools. I had to start over a few times, right? But one of the the great icebreakers for me, like whether it was you know I'm at the new school and having to make friends and you know slot in now or even in terms of right boom it's not school times I, I want to go I want to go to the youth club I want to go there like, yeah I want to go do stuff I'm gonna have to go there and even people like even at this youth club it's not just gonna be people from my school so I'm gonna have to break that ice again right sports was was super vital for me um and I guess this is one of the reasons why it was really tough for me um, when it came to the aspects of my son being left out because of, you know, situations, right? Because I knew, I knew how important that that was going to be. Um, I knew how important it was for me. Like I'm saying to you, like, it didn't matter the school, it didn't matter the area, it didn't matter anything, yeah. Number one, I knew that there was, I could do X amount of talking to get people fly with me or whatever, but I knew that on the pitch, oh shit, <laughs> on the pitch, yeah, was where I was gonna really cement home who I am, what I'm about, and to make people know like the levels, Wagwan. And I don't mean just in terms of the quality of what I might have been able to do, but the fight that I had in me as well. Yeah? Like I I weren't gonna be pushed about. That like I wasn't allowing that because this is a competitive sport. Yeah, we're all here to win, even if it was just a kickabout, even if it was Sunday league, even if it was Saturday league, whatever we're talking about, we're all here to win. We want to win this shit, yeah? And I was no different. And I feel like finding that balance of wanting to win, yeah, and being willing to put your body on the line to win, etc., etc. But also showing the man around you that you're not all about you winning yeah like you are gonna look for that that pass like that's gonna open up the defense it's gonna break the lines from the from the bat and send the winger away like you are gonna do that more time yeah once or twice you might try ping a 25 yard on that yeah but in general you're trying to make the trying to make the the whole orchestra dance trying to make everyone shine um yeah man listen i think i'm gonna end it there yeah reality-based diets